Honored to have our next guest on. He's been on the Trinity Broadcasting Network before on Praise the Lord. And uh, he is a New York Times best selling author and a speaker. His book, The Traveler's Gift Seven Decisions That Determine Personal Success, is my wife's current favorite book on her Kindle. But more than that, it was on the New York Times bestseller list for four and a half months, translated into 20 different languages. He has spoken at the request of four U.S. presidents, and his most recent book, Return to Sawyerton Springs, is a mostly true tale filled with love, learning, and laughter. And we're going to talk about it. Please put your hands together and give a rousing praise the Lord. Welcome to Andy Andrews. Thank you, brother. Hey, brother. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Oh, man, I am so honored to be here with you. I'm so excited that I get to meet you. Oh, this, wow. uh, this, this is, is fun already. This is wonderful. First of all, let me, uh, let me congratulate you on the success you had with the, the uh, Traveler's Gift. What uh, my wife made me read some of it. And, really? <laughs> oh yeah, and I got all excited. I told her, I said, "Oh, this is good." I said, "You know what? Let me read that as soon as you're done." And uh, she's over there right now, all excited because she got to see Andy Andrews. Yes, wow. indeed. Wow. Wow. Well, um, I'm honored. Thank you. Um, talk to us about um, the role your faith played in writing the Traveler's Gift. You know, the, the Traveler's Gift is actually, um, that was the first book that I did that, that kind of hit. And a lot of people didn't know the background of how I found it. It's a story, first of all. And, and all my books are stories. They make the smart authors write the nonfiction books. You know, mm -hmm. People like me have to write stories. It's the only way I can remember anything. <laughs> um, but I, but I, uh, I was almost, I guess 19 when my parents died, almost 20, and my mom died of cancer. My dad was killed in a car accident. So this was a crazy time in my life. Mm -hmm. But I've always had the ability to take a bad situation and make it worse. <laughs> and I did. Um, I, I made some bad choices, and within a couple of years, ended up literally homeless before that was even a word. You know, 30 years ago, nobody was talking about homeless people. Mm. This wasn't even a term. But I was sleeping under a pier on the Gulf Coast and in and out of people's garages. And, and um, long story short, I met an old guy named Jones who got me started reading books, reading biographies. First three he gave me, Will Rogers, Winston Churchill and George Washington Carver. And I got hooked on these biographies of these great people and, and was very curious about their lives because my big question had become, is life just a lottery ticket? I mean, I, I really, I was, I was, that scared me. I, you know, I remember thinking, is everything I learned in Sunday school just so much hula and this guy gets happiness in a family and this guy ends up under a pier because at my worst time clifton i remember thinking if i determine life is a lottery ticket and this is my ticket you know i may quit but i i i read these books and i got started reading and i had this old man that was the first guy in my life ever to tell me the truth about myself mm -hmm. and you know how how strange that is because, you know, when we meet people in bad situations, a lot of times we'll bake them cookies or give them $10 or put them on the prayer list. But very often, you know, very, very seldom do we sit down with somebody and tell them things about themselves that might make them angry at us, mm. right? And, and he did. He risked this, but got me started reading. I, from these, I read over 200 biographies of these happy, wow. uh, influential, godly people trying to find out what is it about them? Were they born this way or is it something they did? And if it was something they did, what'd they do? And how long did it take them to do it? And I found seven things. I didn't even know what to call them at that point. I called them things. Now I understand that these are God's principles. They're just God's principles and they work every time. And so this is the cool thing about being able to talk about principles with people is that you're talking about something that works every time. I mean, how many times does the ordinary person have something in their life that works every single time? Hey, and see, my it, cell phone don't work every right, single right, time. Right, right, right. And, and, it's, and the, the amazing thing about principles is, you know, you've heard ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, mm -hmm. ignorance of principle is no protection from the principle. Just because you don't understand the principle doesn't mean it's not going to affect your life. It just, just because you don't understand the principle of gravity doesn't mean it's not going to affect your life if you stumble off a cliff, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it just will. And, and so the, the, but the thing is, if principles work every time, then why shouldn't we learn them 
and harness them to create the future God has for us? Why shouldn't we teach them to our children so our children can live lives based on principle, not lives where they have to Google the answer every time a question comes up? Mm. Man, you've got me going there. Well, these, you know, and so, the, so the Traveler's Gift was a story about a family going through a tough time, and the dad gets to travel through time meeting with seven historical figures who are also going through a tough time in their own life. And, and each of them gives him a different, you know, he's, he's with, with uh, Anne Frank in the Annex. Has someone and, optioned that book yet for um, the film? We'll talk about that later, Clifton. Okay. We'll talk, we'll talk. But um, a actually, it is in, it is in, you know, produ not in production, but in the early stages of that. Oh. And so, but you would make a great David Ponder, brother. Well, hello. I mean, <laughs> but I appreciate it so much. I appreciate oh, no, it. no, no. When my wife told me about it, and I, I read um, uh, a few pages, and I said, you know, this would make a great movie. And obviously it's going to be. Well, I, you know, I, t I tell people with all my books, I say, just, you know, read a few pages, and if you don't like it, you don't have to read anymore. Mm -hmm. Cause I, because I believe... You know, I believe God wants, God wants uh, Christians, he wants us to be interesting and, and fun and vibrant. And, I, you know, I, and I'm very aware that, you know, I tell people, I kind of tease them sometimes, say, you know, I'm not a Christian speaker. I'm a speaker who's a Christian. Mm. Right? Mm. And, you know, I tease my friends. Yeah, I've got friends, uh, Mark Lowry and uh, Dennis Swanberg, and I say, now, you guys, you guys are Christian speakers, and you know who comes to see you. Christians. That's right. Uh, somehow I've been called to talk to some of these other people, you know, <laughs> and and so and I'm very aware that I that like Paul to the Athenians. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that, that that would be very nice for you, you to compare me. Could I use that on like my website <laughs> compared to Paul in the Bible? No, um, but I, I'm I'm just very aware that I I write books that that Christians can give to their non-Christian friends mm. that they'll actually read, uh -huh. right? Because as, as, much as, I, as much as I admire some of our great Christian authors and as much as I read their books, I've got friends that I can give them their books and they're just not going to read them. But, but what I want to do is I want to create conversations with my stories between the person who gave them the book and, and the person reading the book. I want to create conversations. And when they ask, well, why did this guy, you know, why did this happen? And in the notice, or why did Jones say that the best is yet to come? How did the old guy know the best was yet to come? How do you know that? And, and to create conversations, I'm very aware that that is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a bridge between. Oh, that's between. a good role to have to play. Oh, how, we all need bridges uh, to communicate with folks, sometimes in our own family.